Now here in Paris and indeed in cities across the US in particular, the streets have become more crowded with bikes and scooters. A ride-sharing scheme that lets people rent the vehicles on their mobile phones has seen them placed on pathways across the world. The companies behind them say they could cut down on pollution and congestion. Critics say they can be a pest to pedestrians. Well, to give us his perspective, we're joined by the CEO and co-founder of one of the biggest companies in that market, Lime, Mr. Brad Bao. Uh, Mr. Bao, first of all, how did you make your way to the France 24 studios this morning? Did you use one of your scooters as they are on the Parisian streets? Well, actually, this morning I did it. I take a taxi here. Yeah. But you do use them uh, regularly? Oh yeah, all the time. And also, personally, I'm a, a very, you know, very much cyclist. So I, you know, as long as con condition permits, I, you know, bikes at schools everywhere. That freedom. Now, explain to us how it works, because these scooters seem to have just literally popped up out of nowhere on the streets of uh, Paris. And that seems to be the way this system works. They're, you know, you pick a city and you arrive and, and scatter them around? Actually, not that the uh, you know we see cities and also communities are our partners to to really realize the dream. So every city we go, we get either permit or get an agreement with the city. So before I came, we came uh, to the Paris market, that we had you know a few months discussion with the city itself and discuss how we started the program, how big, and also where we start to deploy them and how we do the you know user education and community outreach. And how does that work? Because from someone who just lives here, you know, what are the rules? It doesn't look like there's that money. It seems to be uh, they're used and, and abandoned even a bit haphazardly. Yeah, so for the beginning part of it, we're still learning about the city a little bit, where to put them in and what are the, uh, the best ways to deploy them and also rebalancing them. And the way we followed it really is the, you know, the pattern of using bikes, how the user are using the bikes today, you know, where they park them and how how they got written on the road, and we just follow that to begin with. And then the big data, you know, and the machine learnings will help us to better figure out how the, the traffic pattern is and where the, the user, you know, we can uh, have most demand and we can serve them better. Indeed, for anybody watching that doesn't live in a city where these scooters are available, uh, basically they, they, there is no docking station. Users uh, get, use them to get from point A to point B, and once they arrive where they want to go, they can simply leave the scooter or the bike uh, where they arrive uh, on the side of the sidewalk. How do you respond to some people, notably advocates for disabled groups or the elderly, and they say, really, you know, because people perhaps are being a bit irresponsible, they've become a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, it is. I think the, uh, you know, the, the vision we have that cannot be realized only by us so we're working very actively with the city and also community as well that you know to educate on the proper parkings and and where they should be belong to in, uh, you know for example that technology helped as well that we asked the user that after finish the ride to take a photo of their parkings and then we can validate that actually our good citizens park at the right places, you know, back racks and also furniture areas, instead of like just let them go. But we do recognize that there's always some bad actors out there, right? And it's up to us using technology and using education, public educations, to encourage the positive, you know, Yeah, to uh, follow how actions. they're being used and used exactly. as you would like them. Uh, the other question people bring in is, you know, these scooters, they can go pretty fast, I believe, uh, just under 15 uh, kilometers an hour. People yeah. don't wear helmets, you know, we just take off and, you know, what, what, what are there in terms of rules when it comes to safety on them? Yeah, so first of all, that the, uh, you know, we follow the uh, local regulations, that what are the requirements in terms of the safety on the helmets, all that. And second part, that we believe the safety is the number one thing for us as a company. When it comes to transportation, inheritably, there are some risks involved. And it's involved on the you know product out itself, and also education, and also infrastructure as well as the uh, safety practices. And matter of fact, that we launched the you know respect the right campaign for the safeties. We committed three million dollars to it, and the biggest one we did was November in Paris last year. Because where do you see, we're seeing this one here, a video uh, cycling, you know, in between the cars. You see them often on the cycle lanes. But for you, where should they be allowed, these scooters? Uh, majority of the trend globally right now is that given the speed of that, it does not travel faster than a bike. And the in potential impact, given that it's less a mass, there's a potential impact is less than a bike. So that the new concept is rather than bike lanes, it's more called a slow mobility lane. So they have to add another separate no, lane? No, not necessarily. They just follow the bikes and follow the, you know, other kind of neighborhood EVs that also goes only like 20, you know, 20 kilometers per hour and only take a very tiny space. 
So I think the, the suggestion is to have them follow the bike lanes. And speaking of the safety, I do have a little gift for you. That's what uh, part of our safety campaigns, and it's a foldable, you know, helmet. That, so people will actually have helmets with them at all yeah, times? Yeah, we gave away hundreds Pretty of thousands neat. of them to the users. So you do think people should wear a helmet on? They're, they're equivalent to the bike, at least, if, if not Exactly. We do encourage you all kinds of ways to increase the safety. Yeah. Um, now, a lot of the arguments in favour of these scooters say, well, it's going to cut down on cars, pollution, congestion, but will it really? Because if you're used to a car that's still comfier, you know, you said it yourself, when conditions yeah. permit, I might take my bike. But is this not really moving pedestrians into more vehicles rather than people out of vehicles? Well, we actually did a very extensive survey about how users are using our service and also what are they using it to replace. And according to the survey, it's interesting enough that globally it's about the same uh, ratio, roughly about a third of the users that are using our service to replace car trips. You know, some are personal car trips, some are ride shares. And have you any of that data in Paris? You know, how, what has the welcome for the service been like in Paris? There were previous bicycle systems that didn't seem to do that well. Yeah, actually, the, uh, the, the number shows that it's extremely popular. And matter of fact, that Paris is our number one market in globally right now, even though we didn't launch it long ago. And I was just reading that Paris, the city, is starting to think of putting taxes on these services. Yeah, I think the, uh, that's part of the regulation we actually welcome and also discuss with the city as well. Again, that we think ourselves, even though we're a global company, that we're a very local operation, meaning that every city we go see, we should adopt into the city and we should be part of it. Yeah. And the start end of following the day, maybe those bike rules in general. Right, exactly. And also, again, you know, back to the safety, back to uh, the adoptions, we do believe that this is a, a collaboration between us and the city and actually uh, among the community as well. That all we together that we can further cut out the uh, you know pollutions and traffic. The users as well are important. Of um, course, they Mr. Are. Bradbaugh, thanks so much for coming in and give, give it, telling us a bit more about those uh, sharing scooter and bike schemes. Thank you. Thank you for having me here.